what is the use case you want to share with us today? And yeah, what's the problem we're trying to solve? How long do I get? I want to show them all. <laughs> uh, let's uh, pick one. Let's pick one. One? Okay. Well, I think the focus will be speed to lead, focusing on high prioritization qualification and not leaving anyone behind. Sounds great. On the customer journey, we're going to start off with interest and form fills. Most customers now, most prospects are doing a lot of research beforehand and reaching out when they're ready. So to meet them in their journey, I love our new scheduling automation from a web form. So when someone submits a web form, can we give them a calendar and allow them to schedule with the appropriate person right away? Now, my forms have standards, which means not everyone gets a calendar. If you're a competitor, if you did not give me your corporate email domain, you got to talk to an SDR. But if you gave me that information and I think you are a viable, qualified lead, we'll go ahead and figure out which account you match to, whether it's we have some demo accounts in the system, customer, open opportunity, prospect, and these result in different outcomes. Will you get the CSM calendar, 30-minute check-in? Will you go right to the opportunity owner and have a meeting directly with the person you're already engaged with? Or are you a prospect and we need a 15-minute discovery call with the SDR to set you up for success on that demo that we're going to get you scheduled with? So as you can see here, when you are deciding who this goes to, it could go to the matched account owner, the CSM over here, it's the SDR. Maybe you use account teams or you have a mapping of some sort. You want to add additional people and maybe even create an event in Salesforce to track those. So I was actually pleasantly surprised when we rolled this out. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to do it. 50% of the time that a calendar was presented, it went right to a meeting. I was so surprised. But what if they don't schedule a meeting? What if they didn't get the calendar or... They abandoned the form. They sat on it too long. They got called into another meeting. They forgot. This doesn't mean that the journey stops here. This just gives you the best viable option first. And if you don't get that, we'll go ahead and we'll pick you up in our person routing. Now, this can be contact or uh, lead. I'm just going to show lead because I don't know. That's what I built. <laughs> the grass that you see here, this is when I mentioned earlier about the workflow automation. So this is what we call Flow Builder. This is our canvas where you as you know, a revenue operations partner to AM, sales team, your different revenue teams, you will build out your orchestration over here. So in this case, with book and scheduling, it's typically in partnership with demand gen or marketing. You may work with your CSMs or if you have an AM team on upsell and the upsell growth. And so this is the core that you're looking at around the workflow automation right. and then you know christine's showing you the various nodes you have here you have a full menu on the right that's where you access all the different integrations and options and just for scale christine put together some examples that are a little more digestible but on average your customers have each of these are nodes on average 200 plus nodes with some customers in the thousands depending on the complexity of their go-to-market motion product lines geographies how much the requests they get from the field. <laughs> if you say yes, the bigger your graph gets. <laughs> yeah, I was reviewing this with the leader on my team who manages all of our graphs. And as we were cleaning them up to like make sure they were a little more easy to digest and not so specific to our organization, she's like, I'm going to go back and do this for all of our graphs. These look so pretty. Yeah, the world is your oyster here. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you can really do anything. And it's a bad thing because you have to rein in the field to do the things that present the most value to the organization, right? And I do a lot of things on the back end for just me that no one knows about. Tracking SLAs, updating fields to keep data governance, time stamping things because, you know, I'm a geek and I like reports and I like time stamping. So as Hendrick said, the trigger isn't just on a lead or person being created or updated. We can look at campaign membership. That's a big one for us. New activities, intent. Uh, movement, job movement. But today I'm just going to focus on that demo request. Let's say that demo request came through. They filled out the form, but they didn't get a calendar or they didn't complete the calendar. We still don't want to lose that. It doesn't just go away. We're going to put it through the demo request flow. And again, I really want to know if the person coming in matches an account today and where they are on that journey with us 
as a business partner. If they do not match, we'll round robin to the inbound team. We're going to send an alert, and this is one of my new favorite things. It is not just sending an alert. It's sending an interactive alert. So when they get the alert in Slack, it's going to ask them if they want to do something. In this case, I'm asking them, do you want to qualify, move this as a qualified lead, or disqualify it right away, send it back to marketing? So if it's disqualified, it's going to go back to marketing. And if it's qualified, it's going to create an account opportunity and convert that lead automatically. We don't want to lose these demo requests. We want to see what happened as, as soon as they're qualified. So I can do that. I have Slack up here right from Slack. Michael from EMC just submitted a demo request, a little homage to one of my former employees here, or former employers. And it says, oh, it assigned it to me and I have 10 minutes. What am I going to do? I'm going to update that status. I'm going to go ahead and qualify that. So while that's working in the back end, action complete, check, check. Everyone's happy. My boss can follow along and, and make sure I'm doing my job. And so what this does here is with the interactive notifications, we have an increasing philosophy here to make sure we are enabling lean data to work where your teams work out of. So this will then push data back into the CRM, into the systems that you want via lean data. And from there, you can increase compliance and make sure that you're not forcing teams to naturally always go outside of their workflow to help keep the process moving along. Their natural habitat. <laughs> always want to keep salespeople in their natural habitat. Yeah, and they, they do this, you know, from Slack on their phone. They can still operate in Salesforce. Just wherever they happen to be. At night, I see some demos come through for cleaning services and they want to write for us. I could just disqualify those right away and reset the round robins of the next person gets the next qualified lead. So that's pretty important to us, equitable distribution and access to quality leads. That's one of the things that we really focus on for our field. But what if it matches an account? So this is like a pure inbound net new, love it. We're creating new opportunities, but often the demo requests come in when we're already working an account. Marketing's working it, the sales is reaching out, and then finally they've investigated enough and they're ready. They want to talk. So if it does match a prospect account, we'll route it to the account owner, send them an alert. By my real org, I set a 10 minute timer. And if they don't respond in 10 minutes, I send the manager an alert. But not to be mean, I'm not punitive. I'm not going to take it away. I'm just trying to say like, maybe Bob's at the dentist and he couldn't respond. And this is about creating a buying experience, a standard for our prospects that when they engage with us, we promise to do the thing we say we're going to do, which is respond to you very quickly, answer all the questions you have, and meet you where you're at. So it's really important to us that once we set that buying journey and what it looks like, that we do have and create that experience. And on the customer side, we actually, you know, we have a mix here of sometimes it's the CSM, sometimes it's the account manager, depending where they're at. I simplified this, but the point really is that it can go to anyone on the matched account. It could go to the, we have SDR, we have, oh, I'm in your dev org, so we don't have SDR. <laughs> but it can go to someone, oops, sorry about that. It can go to the matched account owner, someone mm -hmm. on the account teams or an owner mapping. Whatever you do, we basically can make that happen. That is helping to solve a lot of problems. I think sometimes just these orphans, they are not picked on time. And I know you guys, you've been solving for that for a long time as well. Often the teams just are confused. They just don't know who should really take an action, right? And if nobody's taking action, you should take an action. It's just something definitely that you're solving. But I, I see there's a, another value here. I like how you connected the CRM with the intelligent workflow. I like this term being used in description of these diagrams and collaboration. I think the, the, the workflows have a tendency to be left behind somewhere on the back end of the system and not having enough visibility across the organization. But I think once you bring it on Slack, you're giving the ability to everyone to see, you know, what's going on and who is the owner and whether people are really taking action, right? So, you know, it's one thing that your boss will see this, but there's the rest of the team. Yes. And now the teams will see, okay, so, you know, Johnny has this, right? Like, oh, Maggie, oh, you should pick that, right? So that's, that's awesome yeah. that you bring that transparency without this mystery or magic that is happening somewhere in the system and everybody's assuming that it's going to be done while well, it's not. Yeah. There's another part of our product called the audit logs 
Christina was actually one of the yeah. first when she was in her customer life, people to really take advantage. It's a pretty nuanced part of the product, but it is actually one of the most powerful pieces because we talked about alignment. That is one of the areas where our customers over time have told us this actually drives the ultimate transparency. So basically what that does is it gives you full transparency into what happened and why. It should just execute into perpetuity. But the reality is organizations, go-to-market teams, processes, they all change over time. And so what the auto logs allowed customers to do is they said, we could quickly figure out what was happening. And instead of sitting there trying to diagnose what was happening, who did what, they were able to quickly then get to the root of the problem to fix it. So that was actually a pretty core part of the initial journey of lean data, was just that level of transparency, which we've now taken into all of our products. And, and not only transparency to see exactly what happened, but marketing is in the demo request channel as well. And it helps them to see what type of volume is coming in and quality real time. So it's across the function too, not just what went where, but what's coming in and how can we improve that. Marketing loves seeing that upticks after events. It just gives everyone a sense of momentum and excitement. And I, I do want to be clear though, when you, when you send a Slack alert, there's a lot of noise today. So you need to be super clear on what do I need to know what do I need to do? And who is the action? So if you're going to copy multiple people, you really have to say, FYI, or Hendrick, you must do this. And within this many minutes, setting those guardrails in the notification through clarity and call to actions really will drive the outcomes you're looking for and help people be successful. It is important that you have to ingrain in the culture of the company uh, prioritization around what is the priority and what is not. And, you know, we all have been somewhere in the operations or around the operations. And the operations is usually having this tendency to receive a lot of requests. And nobody really considers that there is multiple requests coming from other sources and other people. 